Oh. Okay. All right, so where, where were we here? We needed a double. Oh, let's see. I'll just try the panel, the full panel. I'm going to open. Now again, it'll load down here. And there's my doors. So there's my large one right there. So I'm going to click on that and drag it out. Notice how it shows up. I want, I want the headlines to be going inside. I'll just drop it there for now. Okay. And I'll just pick. Make sure I'm out of the command. I'll just drag it just to make sure it's in the center. All right. So I go back to my 3D view, and there it is right there. There's the that's what's showing up on the lines that are that are phantom above the actual drawing. Okay. All right. So again, it's relatively easy when you start. I'll pan over again and start almost like from the beginning, drawing a small little structure here. When you pick on your wall, right, make sure before you start drawing that this is set to 10. And then once it's set to 10, you can start drawing your object. We're using the 8-inch generic wall, okay? And when you have the structure drawn, like we have here, placing the doors or the objects, the windows, into the wall will automatically cut the wall for you. So you don't have to, like here, when you're tracing, you don't have to draw the wall in this way and then stop and then start again and keep going. You don't need to do that. In fact, you don't want to do that because you'll end up with, I'll show you what we'll end up with. So if I did that, right, and I'll go back to my view here, see what I end up with. I end up with a completely floor to ceiling opening versus um, actual cutout of a door. Okay, so you don't want to do what I showed you there by stopping. You want to just draw the wall all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to pan again by pressing down the button. My mouse, my mouse wheel, I should say, not the button. All right, now I'll come back over here. Zoom in a little bit. And I will put this wall in. Notice how it lined up. Um, I'll put another wall in over here. Now you might find this confusing at first, doing this where you're tracing it, but try to feel, you know, the freedom of not worrying about uh, the dimensions and just using the actual tools. Okay, so again, oh, sorry. Because I definitely want to make sure that you get to the point where that, that um, you're used to the commands. All right, so I'm just going to drop these in. So notice I'm dropping them in, and a lot of them are going the wrong way, but I can come back and change the direction. OK, 
Okay. Oh, I can change the direction fairly. Oops, I went the wrong way. I'll go back here. Fairly easy. Okay. Now I'm just going to just show you this. I'll to, I'm going to delete this for now, just so, so you can see that we're progressing relatively quick by tracing it. Sure, I do. Put it back. Now this part here, drawing in the actual um, kitchen, this is where it starts to get a little, I'll say difficult, because it does take some practice. The, these are actual components that you have to bring in separately like for example, the counters, the bases of the counters are, that are stored separately. The actual counter themselves is stored separately. The upper cabinets are stored separately. So in reality, I mean, using, using Revit, you need to really know, you know, the, the fundamental components of of construction to to understand the actual uh, system I mean you can learn it but understanding how they go together does help like for example this is very useful that it's very much widely used in kitchen design, like in Home Depot and uh, Lowe's. They're not using Revit, they're using a software called 2020, which is geared solely for kitchen design. All right, so if you go there one day and you sneak up on the person that's sitting there and look over their shoulder, you'll see that they're doing it in 3D. All right, so y'all, you see that this is not fitting. So now here's where we'll get into modifying an actual element on the screen. So now I can click that. Once I click it, I go over, it's showing up. I want to click edit type. Okay, and right here, it's showing the actual um, dimensions. But before I do that, I want to rename this. And I'm just going to call this, uh, let's see what that's going to go down to, 24 inches. So I'll put it down to 24 inches, OK? And I'm going to hit OK. So notice it changed up here. Now it's a 24 by 80. And I'll come over here and modify this and make that two foot or 24 inches. Hit apply and hit okay. And notice now it fits. If I did not rename it, all the other 30 inch doors that I put in would change as well. And you don't want that happening unless you truly want that happening, but you should you should rename it so it becomes part of the families. And now it should be, let's see if it's in there. There it is. It's in there as a, a modified um, family. So instead of just having 30 inch, now you have a 24 inch. And you modified it in place and it did not change all the others that are throughout the, the actual plan. Okay, we have another opening over here, and that's a fairly large one, and probably we don't even have that over here. So what we're going to do, again, same component, same process. It looks like it's probably four or five foot. So I'm going to click on it again, come over here to edit. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it 
um, to 60. Okay. And over here, I will change the width. Five, apply, and OK. So now I will made this much wider than it originally came in at. OK. All right, so let's go and zoom into the bathroom and handle some of the fixtures that are the elements that are in here that come over. And I'll just do a line across that way. And then another line over here. Okay. For my bathroom, I'll probably put a 24 inch door in. So I don't have a large swing. I'll swing it that way. Okay, now the, the bathtub, let's see if we have it, I don't know. That would probably be under plumbing. And it doesn't look like we have any plumbing in here. We have piping, I mean, let's see, it's piping systems. Let's go back over to insert, load. And look for plumbing, there's plumbing. And there's architectural and fixtures and bathtubs. We'll put a standard rectangular tub in. Make sure it's 3D so it looks so we can maybe do a, a visual later. Hit OK. It now opens it and closes, puts it right in here. And I believe there's only one size. Yeah only one size. So we can drag this over and you'll see that it places it right in sometimes. If you notice it's not exactly the same size. So in that case you'll see construction people putting in uh, fake walls over here and fake walls over here. Um, but for our purpose, we can try to move that. Let's see. See there, I moved the image. Okay, so now it fits in nicely. I'll come back over here. I don't have any toilet, so I have to go back over. Load family. And I will put in a water closet, 3D domestic. And that should jump over. And I'll bring this over. Now, if I hit the space bar while I'm in this mode, ladies and gentlemen, hitting the space bar will rotate the object. So if I needed it like that, or if I needed it like that, if you hit the space bar, it rotates the object. Okay, so now I can just drop that right there. Now, the next thing is the sink. Now, this is where we start to have Let's see what's in here. If you notice, you'll see sinks that are really just what they say they are sinks. Okay. Um, so in that case, if you want to go the the whole the whole route here, we will go back, and the first thing we look for is casework. 
and then you come over here and casework is usually indicative of lower cabinets uh, you just go through and that set of sink units so let's see if that'll fit i'm going to say okay and it will lo should load it into casework and it has a bunch of different sizes and i'm going to guess that's probably a 36 inch tar um, unit so there it is and i'm going to turn this guy around and i'll put it right there okay so now i have a bottom lower case and i'm going to go back and get a top Now, for our purposes here, let's see, there it is. Go down one and say okay. And then the countertop depth, and we'll drag it out. Okay. So now we have the top and a base. And again, I'll go back to load sinks. I couldn't, I should have loaded it before, but I didn't. Go back to plumbing, architectural. Now you could create these and put them together and create it as a component. So you don't have to do this type of work. So that's one of the good things about Revit is it does give you that option to do that. But in our case, we're just going through and learning. What did I say? Plumbing, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'll turn this guy. Hopefully it's in the right spot. It's probably not. So now, how save? Okay. I'll go back to my 3D. See if I can maneuver my way in there to see what's going on. I just move that over. Okay. It looks okay. It looks like the top is not exactly right, but I'm going to go back and see. Change this. So, what do I have here? I have a top. All right. And I have a cabinet. So, I have a top and a cabinet that don't match up. So basically what I need to do is take my countertop. First, I want to verify my um, height of this unit. Let's see, let's go over here. And the height is two foot, 10 and a half. I'm going to see if I can control C that. Go back and put this in, put that. And let's see. Does that show me the height there? No, it doesn't. It shows a different actual dimensions. The height is right here. Put that in, hit apply, hit OK. And it looks like, I don't know, it's still not to the right height. I'll go back here. I'm going to make this 12. Uh, I'll just make it 3. Let's see if I make it 12, what happens? Goes back, and now. And I got, now I have to change the height of the actual uh, unit. Hmm. Okay, 
so now I'm going to say this is three and delete that. Okay, so there. So that's how you modify things that are within Revit. It's not always going to match up the way you want them, whether you're using architectural feet fixtures like this, piping or mechanical systems. There's there's just no way for that to happen. I mean, that's why they give you the option of altering the systems themselves. So if you notice in 3D, the doors are shown as being closed. You can have that modified and you can show the doors as being open. Um, let's go back to the floor plan. Okay, so we just did this little bath right here. I'm going to come back to architecture and do no, a couple more. Ones of different things. Okay, I'm going to put a door in. Is everybody following me at this point? Yeah. Okay. Sort of. Go ahead. Sort of. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. Uh, So if I want to change things up, I can change things up for a different size door. All right. Let's see, there's a couple of different windows in here. I'll just now try to put some windows. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types. Obviously, you can do whichever you prefer. I'm not holding you to any window type in here. I'll just throw, throw one in there. Throw one in there. Okay. And like I say, if you want to change it up a little bit, that's fine. So there you would have a space now. Um, on the next class, what we'll try to do is, I'm hoping that you have this done by Monday, is we'll put a roof on this. Now, there's a lot of different irregular shapes on this roof that it's not as simple as putting it on a square or rectangular shape you'll see that it juts out and there's some jut outs here. So we have to put a couple of different roof lines on. So on Monday, we'll go over that and we'll talk about that. Uh, for example, out here, let's, we have a terrace. So if you want to put a flooring system out there, you can put a floor. See again, it turns to green, meaning that you're now modifying something. So I'm just going to use a rectangle and I'm going to simply come in here as close as I can because I don't want to get too close. Sometimes Revit will pick it up and they might tell you to modify it. So at this point, I'll just click. And now I have a flooring system there. If I look at my 3D, I come out, see I have a floor. All right. Now I need a floor throughout the entire house at this point. So I'm going to go back to my plan. All right. And again, it's not just like um, 
like I did in the demonstration where I put a floor in a regular rectangular space, this will be a little bit different. I'll have to trace it with a line. And I'll have to go from here outside and just trace the outside of the wall. Okay, again, go right through the doors. Don't stop. One continuous line all the way around. Make sure that box shows up, the endpoint snap. Okay, now I'm done. I need to do the check. What is that? Again, there. The, wall, the floor is done. Notice how it now covered everything. All right. It's not an issue. Because we can turn that off. I'll show you how to do that right now. So you're going to click on it. Oops, not that one. It's going to give me a hard time here. Okay, so if that happens, if for some reason that happens, you can go to your 3D view. You can look at your or from there, just click on it. I've clicked on it, and I'm going to come back over here again. <clears throat> Let's see, where is it? It's going to start showing up. Wait, that's why. All right. It's going to the wrong spot. Visibility. I'm in the plan mode, or I should go back here. I'll just go back here. It'll be simpler. I'm in the plan mode. I go to visibility and graphics. And I'm going to look for floors. And I want to click that off. I hit apply. And hit OK. Now it's, you can see it again. So basically, what I did was I drew our floor. And I have to remember that it's there. And I shut it off by going over here to visibility graphics. These are similar to. AutoCAD's uh, layering system, but they give it names. Again, there's it's just not made up willy-nilly. There's actual names to it. So if I wanted to turn all the doors off, I could do that as well. Hit OK, and all the doors are gone. I mean, the doors that are on that actual plan underneath are still there, but the doors will be gone. So again, back and forth. I can turn them on and off as I need fit. Now that will also happen when we're in 3D mode. And you want to show what's going on in this space. And we've already put a roof on. You're not going to be able to see that unless you go back to to the visibility graphics and turn off your roof. Okay. Did you put on the floors? I'm sorry? I missed the part you put floors on the thing. Okay, well, what I did, well, it's recording, but what I did was I go to floor and I use the line command that's in this draw panel and I traced the entire outside. From corner to corner to corner, all the way around. Okay. Then I hit the check mark. The floor is there, but I've just turned it off by going to visibility. And there it is. It's off. So I'm going to turn it back on. Hit apply and hit OK. See how it covers everything up now? Okay. Thank you. So the floor is there, and you can also see it here in 3D as well. 
Okay, so if I want, I can come back over here and again, shut it off. Hit apply, hit okay. Now that holds true people for, for the ceiling as well. Okay, let me go back here. In the different views. One more thing. What's that, sir? I can't find the 3D views. The 3D views are under view. So you do go to view and then you got your little house. Just remember view and oh, okay. house. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now let's put on, let's throw in a ceiling. We'll put in a ceiling. Click on this. And again, we don't we don't necessarily want an automatic ceiling. We'll just sketch it ourselves and we'll use this tool. And again, we'll go from the inside this time. And then we'll come over. not the same because you're actually following kind of a different route but you got to keep your eye on the exterior of your house so you're following that as well i mean because truly if you were actually doing this in real life this is the way you would do it because you wouldn't want to have to go to the outside you're not going to put a ceiling on the outside that would also drive your material costs up if you were to do uh, a simple takeoff, it wouldn't be accurate. So that's only the reason why I'm doing it this way. Yeah, yeah. And again, I'm gonna close it, boom. I'm gonna hit that. Now we have a ceiling. We're not gonna see it, because it is in the ceiling plan. Now, this is a commercial grade ceiling. Obviously, we don't want a uh, ceiling tile in a residential property, unless it's like your, your, you know, your basement or a game room. So we might just click on this and change it to gypsum wallboard on studs. I click that and it turns it to a solid space. So now you have a solid ceiling. I go back to level one. And then what I'm going to do to demonstrate that is go to view. And I'll put a camera over here looking this way. And you'll see that. I do have a floor and a ceiling at this point. So if I were to now do a, some type of render with my ball, ball okay. it would show up again. It's showing up dark because we don't have any lights in there yet. All right. And in the case, we, we could put architectural molding down at the bottom. We could do it at the top. We're not going to do that for this exercise. So now I'll just close that and go back to level one. So uh, there is the start of the actual floor plan. Now, what we did not do, let's see. Text. Again, text is going to be under annotate, just like dimension would be if we were to dimension. We'll dimension this next week, but I'll show you how to dimension. Now, if I click on that, and I come down here, notice it's dimensioning to the center line of the wall. And that's usually how they will do it in architecture or construction. So I'll just go from here to here. And notice how the text already matches the size of our, our floor plan. 
So it's set up for that purpose. And here I'm going to just go from there. That's a lot easier. Okay. Now there's the mentioning. Now text itself, all we need to do is click on that. And we come down here. And we're going to type in bedroom. If you notice, the text might be too big. We'll see. We'll close it. So at this point, it's probably feasible for us to say, all right, we got to change this. So if I click this, again, once I click it, your properties, your properties box over here will show you what, you, what is actually going on. There, I'll edit it. And right now it's at quarter inch. Obviously that's too big. And we'll drop it down to eighth. And I'll hit apply and hit OK. And that looks that looks okay. All right. So that's how you put text into the spaces. Now if you needed smaller text, you could do the same thing. You could put smaller text in. Uh, let's try that. Let's see. If I want it to come in here and put bath in. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to hit close. And I'll pick my bath and we'll go over here. Now, the thing is, we have to make sure, again, it is they're all tied to each other. So I'm going to have to rename this because right now it's at eighth inch and I changed quarter inch to eighth inch. I'm going to change this text to uh, 16th and I'm going to rename it. And I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to call it, 16th. Oops, it's one sixth. Hit OK, hit apply, and it changed the text, but did it change that one too? I think it did. Let me see if I did something wrong. Hold on. I might have run out of order. Right, I'm going to duplicate it. And now I'm going to call it, what was that? That was a quarter, oh man, I went, I went out of step. And I'll make this a quarter. Okay, back to the same size now. So there I changed it and not affected this one, okay? So again, remember that you have to duplicate if you're modifying any of the families, whether it be text or even the wall type, you have to duplicate it and then rename it, okay? Uh, let's see. Now, if I wanted to just change this wall, to a different type wall, I can do that just like we did in the last um, demonstration. I can change that. All right, now it does change the, the, the way the wall actually looks as well because it's not the same wall. Now I can change that by going over here again putting in the solid fill, hitting apply and okay. I'm gonna make it black. This way I know it's a different, different wall. And I'll come back here. And let's see, where is that? There, the wall itself actually changed and it didn't change anything else, all right? So there is a brief 
overview of the families in use, okay? Using the actual walls, using the wall and doors and windows. We changed the wall. We've inserted some fixtures. Um, we inserted some text. We inserted dimensions. Now, what will be a challenge for you, oops, sorry, is doing the actual kitchen. So, for example, I'll start it. This way you can use it as a reference. None of that's probably going to be in the uh, family load side on the uh, browser. So I'm going to go over here. And let's see, we got a double sink over there, right? So I'm going to open that, load it over there, come back, and uh, go back, back to casework and base cabinets. Now, you might, you know what? So you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth. You might as well just say, you know what? I'm just going to, other than the vanity, take everything and hit open. It might give you a warning to say that's a lot of stuff. Here it didn't, okay. And the next thing you wanna do is do the same for the counters. You know, maybe take them all except the the, the vanity because we're not working with the vanity. Hit OK. And let it. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just overwrite it. It doesn't matter. It probably change my my other stuff that I put in here. All right, so now. We'll come over here and start putting things in. Now, you may want to look at it in a different view. So, it's fine. Um, so you may want to come over here and, okay, now here again, our ceiling is on. So we're going to come back over here, turn our ceiling off, hit apply, hit OK, and we'll twist around and see if we can get a good view into the kitchen. All right, so now you may want to say, all right, I'm going to start putting in some casework. And again, you may look up at the top and it will show as you go through this what it looks like. Um, and again, we can drag it out. Now notice, I drag it out. It's giving me dimensions. I can rotate again in 3D. And I can drop them in over here as I go through. So you have to have an idea of what this makeup is going to be as far as cabinets. So that is going to be challenging for you. So that's why you want to make sure you get a good, good shot of the area that you're working. So here, let's see, you have a corner unit. You can drag that in. Okay. All right, and you can zoom in a lot closer, depending on what's going on on your computer. And there, you'll start to develop um, your actual countertop. Now you're going to go look for the tops themselves. Here, you have. If you see, you have a whole counter that extends a, a good length. Now, once I put that in, people, like that, I can change the length. If I click on it, 
It won't show me from here. So I need to go back to plan. Now it shows me I have the option. If I wanted to, I could stretch that. See how I'm stretching it? I can stretch it to make, make it fit. All right. But in that case, in our case here, I don't think we want to stretch it. We want it to get to that point because there is a refrigerator. And the refrigerator, again, load families. It most likely, if it's not under a lot of the stuff that we looked at, um, specialty equipment, domestic. Let's see, it's not there. This is where you have to search and look for it because I do not know where everything is myself. Mechanical, uh, maybe? No. Mm -hmm. That's unusual. I used to know where it was, but I haven't used this in a while, so that's not what you there. I haven't used it in a while. And I'm not sure, so you'll have to search for it. It's in here, I know that. I just don't know where. Hmm. If I look for it offline and I find it, I will let everybody know. Maybe under furniture, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's something I have to look for for you. It's not under entourage. Planting specialty equipment is where they had it last time. I'm not sure why it's not there. Cooktop, range, oh, there it is, refrigerators. Okay. See how they have these things classified. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, we're in domestic, then you go to mid range. Let's see, you know, they have some more things. So if you want to have a refrigerator with an ice maker or with no ice maker, it'll load it. You go down to specialty and it should give you a different size. It only gives you one size and you drag it over. And again, space bar will rotate it and you put it in just like that. Any questions? So now if you want, I'm sorry. I can't find like, um, I'm going to low family and I can't find like the doors. Okay, the doors will be, uh, the, the doors will be under doors. Let's see, hold on. Should be right there, see? Oh. Could you, um, may you go back, may you go uh, one file more file back, please. Like uh, that way. Yes. Uh, okay, libraries. You should go to U.S. Imperial, and then it'll take you to this. And okay. Find U.S. Imperial on my side. Is it like another file that I have to download? No, it should have came along when. <laughs> uh, I actually had to download a separate file to get all of them. Really? I did some. I I googled it. Apparently, they changed the way it worked, and it doesn't install everything by default. So yeah, if you yes. Autodesk, they have it on their website. I forget exactly where it is, but you can download the remainder of all the families. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't says. aware of that too. The last time I downloaded it was 2019. 
as a, a generation. Yeah, I think they changed it like last year or two years ago or something like that. A generation ago. Okay. If you run into issues where you don't have all this stuff, I can. The thing is, I don't know how I would be able to share it. I mean, I could share it on Google uh, Drive, but it might be a long download. Try the Autodesk site first. Here, I found it again. You have to Google Autodesk Revit 2021 content, and then there should be a section English United States. It's called, it's titled uh, Revit 2021 Imperial Libraries. It's like a almost a one and a half gigabyte download. Okay. Super. Okay. So does everyone feel that they can go ahead and proceed to, to complete this plan? Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't worry about it. It was those. like 1.3 gigabytes, right? Yeah, it says uh, 1.3 gigabytes. All right, I found it. Thank you. Don't worry about finishing sure. the roof for the exterior. We'll do that separately on Monday. You guys have school Monday, right? Yeah. Okay. Anything I could review back to this lecture and find out the stuff that we missed. Yeah, I'll, I'll put this up as soon as I get off with you. Last uh, um, Monday, I forgot. I don't know why. I just walked away. No problem. Okay, I'll put this video up tonight. I'll put the other video up. Um, I can't do it tonight because I don't, I forgot my, my external hard drive at school. So it'll have to be till tomorrow morning. I'll put the Monday video up, but this video here, I'll put up tonight. All right, everyone. Yep. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Don't worry. I mean, make sure make two, make two, make two copies of this file. This way, if you lose your, you delete the image somehow and you can't get it back. At least you have a backup copy. All right. When I inserted this image, it was not at the right scale. All right. I had to actually adjust it and I believe I had to reduce it down. And how I figured that out was I kept reducing it and I went with the nominal size of an exterior door like over here, which is three feet. So once I reduced it down and that dimension from there to there was three feet, then I knew it was at the right size. Okay. And you could do that with any, any technical image, not, not floor plans. You could do it with site plans, wiring schematics. All right, I will see you on uh, Monday. I'll upload this tonight. Everybody have a good weekend. You too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Good night. Well, um, Professor, I just wanted to ask um, real quick for so I don't know how to find the doors on AutoCAD. Um, right, yeah. Hold on. Hold on, all right. Yeah, I just, I sent the link to the download in the chat. So for if you the, follow that link and. Is that for the additional uh, families? Yeah, I sent the link where Autodesk has it on their website. Okay. And I sent the name of the, the one you're supposed to download. It should be like the second one. Okay, okay. is this for the doors? No, no. Yeah. No, this is, he's talking, he's talking about the doors for Revit. You're okay. talking about the doors for AutoCAD, right, Hannah? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, those are two different, hold on. 
Oh, okay. I didn't realize yeah. you're talking about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if I in a drawing now, hold on. Can you see that? Probably not. I didn't share the right one. Hold on. All right. Can you see that? I'm in AutoCAD now. Yeah, I can see. All right. So you're going to go over to view, right? And you're going to click on tool palettes. Yeah, that doesn't show up for me. So, um, yeah, I was using, um, well, I've been using my mom's HP laptop. I tried going through view. Right. I just, yeah, the option for uh, tool palettes didn't show up. This didn't show up here at the top? No. Here, type it in, see what it says, uh, tool palettes. Type that in at the command line. Go down here and type in tool oh. palettes. Should oh. All right. If that's not working, see if there, it should open up. Mine are already open, but here, let me try it again. Um, so I can set up a little differently since it's uh, more updated. It, uh, um, is it, would it be under uh, geometric constraints? No, um, no, no, it's under view. Okay, if you, if view's not showing up. Would it be under Imperial samples? No. Because when I look it up through command, I don't see the option of view. I mean, maybe if I... Um, did you type at the command bar? Did you type toolbar? Yeah. Hey, tool palettes, I'm sorry. Tool palettes? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, what I happened? On it. Oh, it's under architectural. Okay, I found it. You found it? Yeah, it's under imperial samples, under architectural. All right, so you know where you are right now? You're in the, you're in the design center. That's where you are. You're over here. That's where, so if I click on this right now, mm. see what shows up? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Is that where you are right now? Well, Mine um, is showing up a little differently, but okay. I'm assuming that's this. Yeah, that's it. Um, but I don't understand why this is not showing up on your palette menu. Yeah, I don't know why. Is palette showing I up? I... I mean, is this whole panel not showing up? No. It's not. Mm -mm. Hmm. It's okay, though. I guess it's from now on. And I'll just uh, type if I can't find it, I'll type it in through the command. Okay, through the that's yeah, weird. That's, yeah, and this was a download from, from Autodesk, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's on my mom's HP, so I thought it would be you know the same exact setup as if yours. You would hope, <laughs> they, obviously. I, I mean, when you download, they change it so many times yeah. from download to download. Yeah. I don't understand why they do that. They confuse a lot of people. Um, so, all right, well then just type in tool palettes. Okay. And it should pop up on the right side or the left side. Yeah. It's... Uh, okay, so once that happens, you go to architectural mm -hmm. and you see there's a lot of doors other things that are showing up in there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Good weekend. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye. Bye.